Wind turbines are the primary source of power for many players in Rust, but our understanding of them is limited. Most people know there's some form of wind that dictates how much power they generate, and that they face the wind and will generate zero power if blocked. In reality, they kind of just slowly spin around. The blades will stop rotating if blocked, but the turbine does keep spinning, so if it's unblocked on another side, it will eventually reach it and generate power again. Most people also believe that the higher you place wind turbines, the more power you get, but that actually isn't entirely true. Higher does give you more power, but it's relative to the ground, not based on absolute height over sea level. Consider this example. The wind turbine at the bottom of the cliff generates more power than those at the top because it's three floors off the ground while those are placed at ground level. Or take this second example. Both turbines at the exact height, roughly half a floor above the water, but the one in deeper water generates more power because it's several floors up from the ground below. So if you build your solo chad base on the top of a mountain, unfortunately you still need to place your wind turbine high off the ground to get more power. But how high? Wind turbines generate roughly 60 power in battery at ground level, with roughly 3.5 more power added for every floor you go higher. This means you can fully sustain a maxed out large battery with a wind turbine placed 12 floors above the ground. Though it's very close, so you may want to consider 13 floors or 10 floors with a solar panel added at the minimum. Likely even a little bit more just to ensure the battery can charge. Now, I generally think it's wiser to use more wind turbines or even some solar panels rather than placing turbines very high to avoid the resource costs and upkeep incurred, but there are various pros and cons to that approach and there isn't a simple answer for everyone. This also concludes what I think is most useful to know about wind turbines, but the wind speed dictating the fluctuation of power for a turbine is a topic I looked at extensively as well. Ultimately, I don't think there is anything actionable there, but I will share what I learned in the comments for the curious. Otherwise, I hope this has been helpful and thank you for watching.